Dyson spheres are hypothetical megastructures built by highly advanced civilizations around their stars to harness energy. A group of astrophysicists says they've identified several possible candidates. Now you might say, go away, that's just one of those crazy alien stories. But I'm hoping to convince you that this isn't as crazy as it sounds. A Dyson sphere is basically a giant power plant that wraps around an entire star. The inside of the sphere would be covered in whatever the aliens call their super duper version of solar panels. That grabs off the energy and if you want visible light on your planet, you can use that energy to create it where you need it. Dyson spheres are named after the physicist and mathematician Freeman Dyson, who came up with the idea in 1960. Compared to normal stars, such structures would appear unnaturally dim in the visible range. But since they'll inevitably get warm when they harvest all that energy, they'd still emit waste heat in the infrared. There isn't any type of star that we know of that naturally looks like this. A group of astrophysicists has now identified seven possible candidates whose emission characteristics look like Dyson spheres. They could just be weird stars or stars covered by dust or something else like maybe giant hot potatoes, but maybe they're the real thing. These candidate objects will now be investigated further. I don't think this is a crazy idea for the following reason. Technological progress is strongly tied to energy access. We know this from all civilizations that we've ever looked at. The more advanced, the more energy they use. Use. This is basically why I think degrowthers are enemies of humanity, but I digress. Now, we hear a lot of talk about how we're not using all that wonderful solar energy that reaches us every day from our magnificent sun. If we covered the entire surface of our planet with solar panels, that would deliver several thousand times the current global power consumption. But most of the energy from the sun never reaches us in the first place. It goes into outer space. Such a waste. If we covered up the entire sun, that would be at least 10 trillion times the current global power consumption. And stars are just sitting there, giving off all this energy. Dyson spheres are the obvious thing to do for any advanced civilization. And that's why I think it's not crazy. If you have the technology to harvest the energy of a star, it would be crazy not to do it. Sure, building a Dyson sphere would require a lot of material. It would require entire planets or multiple moons to build them. The sheer scale of the engineering feat is mind-boggling, but leaving aside the giant size, it's really a straightforward idea. I believe that any advanced civilization would go for something like a Dyson sphere. So if you want to know if there's intelligent life out there, it's the thing that you want to look for. And yes, I strongly believe that there is intelligent life out there and it's almost certainly much more advanced than we are. You see, our sun is what's called a third generation star. The first stars were born 13 billion years ago. Our sun is only about 4 billion years old. There have been planets in this universe that are hospitable for life in some form for billions of years. Now imagine a civilization that has progressed its technology for that long billions of years. They could have populated entire galaxies by now. Why haven't we heard of them? I think it's quite simple. We haven't developed the technology they use to communicate. Why aren't they contacting us? I think it's because life isn't rare. It's actually quite common and we're just completely uninteresting. It's like you don't care what microbes are in your backyard. Yes, maybe there are actually some specimens among them that no biologist has ever classified. And yes, maybe some biologists would be interested in that. But let's be honest, most of us don't care about the exact classification of microbes. I think that for aliens, it's kind of like that. We're just another backyard variety and a pretty stupid one in addition, seeing the problems we're causing ourselves. Have they been here? Did the aliens maybe send some of those UFOs that are no longer called UFOs because renaming things is what we call progress on our planet? 
well, maybe they have been here, but I can't think of a good reason why they'd send us any flying objects into the atmosphere, and certainly not why these objects would be just about detectable with our technology, but they're not quite. That doesn't make any sense. And I'm not sure, honestly, it's a good idea for us to send messages out into space and beg for attention, because maybe someone takes a liking to our planet. But most of the time, I think that we stand more to lose than gain from finding extraterrestrial life. It could solve a lot of problems very quickly. But until aliens come to rescue us, better keep on dusting those solar panels. If you'd like to learn more about recent scientific developments, I recommend you have a look at Nautilus magazine. Nautilus is a science magazine that keeps you up to date on the most relevant topics that are being discussed today. They frequently have scientists writing for them who'll tell you the inside stories. I've written a few contributions for them myself, most recently about John Oppenheim's theory of post-quantum gravity. Nautilus comes with a digital and a print version and it's just a pleasure to read. They they really put a lot of effort into writing and the graphic design is top. What I particularly like about Nautilus is that they cover all areas of science, from astronomy to economics, history, neuroscience to philosophy and physics. If you use our custom link joinnautilus.com slash Sabine, you get 15% off your membership subscription, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching, see you tomorrow.